well, fellow disciples of Jesus Christ, who have fasted much, how's Lent going for you so far? Three days into it, have we all made our effort to maintain the promises we have made? Some people have struggled with the giving up of chocolate to pray more, and it's only the Friday after Ash Wednesday. Changes are happening, even in our liturgy. Notice we're out of the ordinary time. The vestments are more penitential in nature, the purple. We don't sing the, uh, the Gloria when we gather for Sunday Mass. Even the antiphons of the gospel, we don't say the A word. You know what word I'm talking about. Not until the Easter Vigil. But however, as I was gathering at prayer yesterday with a religious community, the seminarians and a few priests slipped up. And that word was intoned. My gosh, God is still in his heavens. It was okay. We're human beings. We got back on the track and recollected ourselves and continued with that glorious prayer of the church from the Liturgy of the Hours. We're all going to perhaps step back and say, well, what good is the fasting? What good is my Lenten sacrifice going to do for an individual or for my relationship with God, or even more importantly, my relationship with my brother or sister? The benefits are manifold for, say, fasting. We have the physical benefit. We might lose a little weight. Spiritually, we become more God-centered. We know where the food, the drink, the uh, enjoyment comes from and say, yes, if I'm depriving myself of the certain food or activity, I have God to thank for it. But then there's the societal benefit. Pope Francis, in his Lenten message released a few days ago, said that Lent is the fitting time for self-denial. We would do well to ask ourselves what we can give up in order to help and enrich others by our own poverty. By our poverty, by our sacrifice, we can reach out and hopefully transform those who are experiencing various forms of desolation, material desolation, spiritual desolation, psychological desolation. The Pope went on to say that we are called to hopefully end violations of human dignity and discrimination. Look at our headlines. People who are Christians are being persecuted. Nations are at war against each other. Isaiah's words, those prophetic words written hundreds of years ago, have yet to be fulfilled completely. The fast that is called for all of us today is to hopefully release those bound unjustly, to untie the thongs of those oppressed. By our deprivation, we can be more God-centered and hopefully spur those who make decisions of peace and justice into right activity. Our church is founded upon those who sacrificed. We commemorate two early saints today, two beautiful holy women, a noble woman named Perpetua and her slave girl, Felicity. They were martyred in North Africa simply because they proclaimed that they were Christians. What a beautiful example they have for us as church. In an interview given earlier this week to an Italian newspaper, Pope Francis said that the church has been guided by a feminine example throughout the history. And it is his desire, and hopefully all of our desire, that women have a more prominent role in the church in decision making. It's our pilgrimage. It is our legacy through the intercession of Mary Most Holy, who bore forth the Word made flesh. The Word made flesh, Jesus Christ, who made a pilgrimage for 40 days to help him in his public ministry, to proclaim that we turn away from sin and believe in him, the true good news. And as we do those, any type of wounds of our personal or corporate sinfulness, as remarked upon by Isaiah the prophet, will be quickly healed. Sometimes quickly, sometimes slowly. That's why God gives us this 40-day retreat every year, to remember our dependency in a holy way upon him. We who are dust, and unto the dust we shall return. We who turn away from sin and believe in the good news. We who give things up, perhaps, so we can have a great relationship with God who never gives up on us.